People only work with people that they trust. Yeah. So know, like, and trust are the three things you need to establish in order for a relationship to, to form. Hey, it's Dr. B, and welcome back to another episode of the Thrive State Podcast. And this podcast is going to be a little bit different because we normally talk about health, we normally talk about mindset, we normally talk about stress reduction. But on this podcast, we're really going to talk about how you actually start to tap into purpose. And when you tap into that, how do you bring yourself to the world? How do you share your message? And what are the different avenues out there for you to be able to, to create a new career, a new financial future for yourself when you tap into that. So I am super excited to bring on my next guest. Now, if you are new to this podcast, welcome. I hope you're going to have lots of fun. I know you're going to get tremendous amount of value listening to this. And if you're liking the energy, if you're liking what we're producing here, listen to more episodes. But I urge you to subscribe to this podcast, hit the notification button so you don't miss any future episodes. And if it brings you value, if it brings you some joy, share it with your friends and family because we want this podcast to grow. And hey, if you are a returning member of the podcast, if you've been enjoying what we've been doing so far, please help us out by going to ratethispodcast.com slash Thrive State and leave us a five-star review. It really helps us grow this podcast and for us to have more amazing guests to come talk to you each week. Our podcast guest this week is Eric Cabral. He has been in corporate America for a while, pivoted from there, went into real estate, created financial abundance, and now really in the business of helping people build personal brands and getting the brands out there through podcasting. I know with the pandemic happening over the last couple of years, people have really shifted in terms of their health, their mindset, their emotions, and their careers probably all took some form of hit. Now, the reason I brought Eric on is you're going to learn some things. He really made a big decision when he felt like life wasn't really going in his direction, he, and he made a pivot for himself. So in this podcast, you're going to learn how to pivot during uncertainty. And as you pivot, you'll start to discover this. As we start to take new action, some people ask me, Dr. V, how do you find your purpose? You know, I always tell them, you know, step into the things that, that, that light you up or bring you joy. And some people don't remember what those things are. And if you don't remember, that's okay. How you remember and how you rediscover it is by taking new action. When you take new action, you, you'll soon learn either you love that action, you don't love that action, but you learn something about yourself. And you'll learn from Eric's story of how taking new action initially wasn't fulfilling to his purpose, but as he started getting into it, he started to figure out which parts of the actions he desired more and which parts he didn't desire so much and, and how it was taking messy action that led to the discovery of his purpose. Now, as we all have our purpose, we can all share that with other people. And what better way of sharing that is to create a personal brand. Now, creating a personal brand for yourself will help you in business. It will help you uh, be known to potential prospects, to potential clients, to potential you know people out there in the social universe. And then how do you take that personal brand? And one of the aspects of personal branding and, and getting yourself out there is podcasting. He's going to tell you why podcasting is not dead, why podcasting will open up so many new opportunities for yourself. And so if you're considering opening a podcast for yourself, if you're considering creating a personal brand, this is going to be an excellent episode for you. So not only will we get a sense of, of how to pivot during times of uncertainty, but how then to, to use that to tap into our purpose. And when we got this purpose, how we share that with the rest of the world. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Now, so a little bit more about Eric Cabral. He left corporate America after being in it for about 20 years. So you can imagine what type of security he had from receiving a steady paycheck. And when he left, he went into real estate investing in order to achieve financial freedom. He educated himself, built networks, analyzed hundreds of deals, and he purchased his first multifamily building in less than a year. 
After building his real estate empire, he became the founder of a media agency, On Air Brands, the innovative networking and podcasting event, Podmax, and the real estate investment company, Minardo Investment Group. He is also the host and the co-host and producer on multiple shows, including Entrepreneur Circle, Capital Hacking, On Air Brands Live, Cashflow Ninja, and the Hidden Entrepreneur and True Multifamily. As you'll get to see in this episode, he loves to share his decades of experience in creative branding and marketing strategies, as well as helping others leverage the power within the podcasting platform. He sits on a board of over a thousand member real estate investor group called SJREIA, and he's also a proud member of GoBundance, which is a tribe of millionaires seeking to share all successes, struggles, ambitions, and failures without being judged. You'll find out that he is a father of two. He is a family man first that has many successful businesses. I hope you learned something great today. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Cabral. My man, Eric Cabral, welcome to the Thrive State Podcast. So happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Dr. V. You know, today is going to be a really special treat. You know, we've talked a lot about health. We talked a lot about internal health, but we haven't really talked so much about, you know, financial health and, you know, career, you know, today's episode, I'm so excited to dive in to, you know, maybe finding purpose and and pivoting because I know you, you've done that. So I hope you're ready. I am ready, ready, willing, and able. All right, here we go. Now, before we dive into it, just to lubricate the conversation, we do something called the five to thrive. All right. Are you ready to play a thousand points each? They don't really need anything, but <laughs> yeah, let me, but if I like you, we, we, we get to, we get to have lunch together. All right. Here we go. Yeah, question, question number one, what is your favorite book? My favorite book has to be because it changed my life. It changed my mindset, changed everything is Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad. That, that mm. was a game changer for me. That was the purple pill as we call it just for so many, many reasons, but mainly because it was the catalyst to me making the pivot from corporate, being a corporate employee and having a W2 mindset to shifting as an entrepreneur and business owner and all the things, the good and the bad that come with that. Oh, beautiful. And, and I'd love to get into that story in a second. Yeah. Question number two, thousand points for that great answer. Question <laughs> number two, what was the best decision in your life that you've ever made? Man, marry my wife, of course. I mean, whew, I hope she hears this episode. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I imagine like you, handsome devil, like, you know, I, I was out on the market for a while. I didn't yeah. get married until yeah. I was in my 40s, bro. So like, I had to wait for the right one. You know, I had a lot of options blessed. I had options and some of them wanted to get married and I went and explored that road a little bit. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, this is the one right here. This is the one for me. Mm, Yin and yang, yin to my yang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got engaged last year. I'm in my forties as well. So I'm going to be in your boat, but I did the kid (laughs) first. I did the kid <laughs> first. I have an eight-year-old. Oh, I, I heard you know you've got you you you've got two daughters. I've got a bonus yes. daughter who is eight years old, and a, and a daughter who's eight months old. So we Love share it. that in common as well. So thousand fifty points for, for that. Question <laughs> number three: What was the hardest decision you ever had to make? Who it was making that shift. You know, pivoting from from having a W two and a very well paid. You know above six figure salary, which very, very comfortable. And, and I, I'm sure you've heard this saying, you know, the, the two most addicting things in life is number one, heroin, which I'm blessed. I've never tried it. Never, never was tempted to. And number two is a weekly salary. So I had to walk away from that, man. And mm. that was a scary decision to make. I had to do that with my wife. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot of people have to make some scary decisions um, you know, really around this pandemic, because, you know, how it's shifted the way we live and shifted uh, careers. So definitely want to dive into that. Question number four, if you're ready, is what was the biggest challenge? It could have been the same answer, but what was the nugget of gold you got out of, you know, going through that challenge? The gold that I didn't discover until I was digging and digging and digging was, you know, cause initially the, the, the goal was to just replace my salary. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need to find a way to do that. And of course I started to take steps to do that, but I didn't realize 
that entrepreneurship and business ownership is really just a disguise for self-development and improvement. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's been the golden all. If I make no money, I'm the happiest and healthiest uh, and wealthiest I've been in my life. So yeah, blessed, mm. truly blessed. Oh, beautiful. And and after going through your journey, question number five, you're, you're killing it with, with this game here. Question number five, how would you like to be remembered? Man, not 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 just with my kids, but they're you know they're my kids' kids and kids and great great grandchildren. Of course, what we call legacy. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping like you know in, in Filipino culture, Lolo, which is weird, like imagining Lolo because my Lolo was super old, and then my dad is now Lolo to my kids. So for kids to be calling me that is is wild. I hope and you know pray that that will happen, and I'll see the day, but. Yeah, I'm just hoping they pass my stories down and what I've done in life and the lessons that they learned from me uh, passed on, along from generation to generation. Well, that's beautiful. That, that, that's really about legacy there. So Eric, I'm, I'm so happy you joined on this podcast. One of the reasons why I you know, wanted you to come on was you really made a big pivot in a, in a very pivotal part of your life. So I want want to go back into that story because, you know, with COVID happening, I know people who have lost their jobs or people who have taken big pay cuts and people are just, you know, it's really accelerated the process. Probably they weren't happy with where they were at, but this has really accelerated the process and they, they wanted to know, what do I do next? And so why don't you talk a little bit about your W-2 job and where you were at at that point? And what was that what was that little catalyst that made you go, okay, I need to pick up Robert Kiyosaki's book. And what was your next steps right after that? Yeah. How much time do we have? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I was in the daily grind, the day, the daily, you know, what I like to call, you know, hashtag cube life. We, we go into work every day. It's very predictable. If anyone is a fan of Groundhog's Day and Bill Murray, you know, it was like hit that alarm clock, boom. And it's the same day over and over and over. And I started to notice that I wasn't happy. You know, yeah. I wasn't happy with my life. I wasn't happy, even though I, you know, I was married and I had a young daughter and a wonderful home. Uh, there was something missing, something that needed to be filled, you know, a void that was yeah. there. And I, you know, looked in the mirror and I was getting grayer. I was getting fatter. I was getting just, uh, just going down the wrong road. And I didn't know how to stop it because I was, like I said, getting paid well and, and, and reached the top of the corporate, you know, ladder. Mm -hmm. And then it was really the blessing to have you know, the opportunity because I was getting laid off for the second time. And you mm. know, I always say blessed because out of a 20 plus year career, like it only happened twice. And that was what slapped me in the face and said, Hey, pay attention. What's going on here. You can go, which I did. I got my resume in order, had multiple job offers. Uh, one in particular, you know, I don't know if they're still the number one pharma company, but they're the top of the dog, the, the food chain. And then I realized, Oh, I'm also going to be the top of the food chain in my my little, you know, area and bubble, but I'm not going to be making that much more money. It's not mm -hmm. like I'm a partner, you know, in a law firm or something. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really went back to my wife and said, Hey, what can we do here? What can I do to change everything? Because I'm, I've, I've gotten to the level where I understand business uh, within, you know, corporations. Um, maybe if I apply that knowledge to my own and our own thing. And she said, what are you thinking? And I was like, uh, thinking about real estate investing. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about? You're creative. You're not, that's data, numbers and finance. You're terrible at those things. I was like, but I'll learn. So honestly, what happened, Doc, was it ha over the course of eight to 12 months, I acquired uh, my very first multifamily, started to manage it myself, bought it, you know, and figured it all out, you know, through building networks and educating myself through podcasts and books and just people surrounding myself with the right people. And that's what changed everything that changed my entire life and the trajectory of where I was going, which mm. was not a good place. Sounds good. Let me, let me ask you, was the primary motivation at that point, you know, financial or was it, or did you find that, okay, there, there was, there was a deeper purpose. Did you, did you find purpose in real estate at that point? Or did you say you just needed to change? You moved in that direction and it was in the discovery of, of everything that you're doing now that the purpose started to show itself to you. It's a great question. 
the majority of people, especially when they get into early stages of investing, they always say, what's your why? What's your purpose, right? And we all knee jerk boilerplate answer is my kids, my family, you know, mm -hmm. my loved ones. Yes, finance absolutely had a lot to do with it, right? Because I, they always saw rags to riches when it comes to real estate, right? Everybody thinks that you could be, be a millionaire overnight when you, if, if you get into real estate, because that's what the 1% do. Um, and that was my broad understanding of like how I can get in the game. As long as I started to understand that I was in the game, number one, mm -hmm. and that there are rules to the game, AKA tax code, right? There's a way that you can sort of develop the strategies around building wealth and legacy wealth, you know, for you and generations to come. So that was through real estate. But to your point, Dr. V is throughout that discovery, I didn't feel 1000% like, yes, legacy kids, and I'm doing it for my family, of course. But that's usually an excuse that we use. Mm -hmm. And it's not the real driver. But to me, my real purpose now, I've realized over time, as I've been developing business and relationships and networks and just just loving on people. Mm -hmm. It truly is my my mantra for me and now my company's mission is to, to make the world a better place, one mic at a time. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? Conversations like this, bro, like you on your mic, me yeah. on your mic, things like that. You on stages, me on stages, I can make an introduction to you uh, on a podcast or stage. How do we affect change? We do it with each other, right? We can't do these things alone. Right. And that's become my greater purpose. And I would not have discovered that, honestly, if I didn't, if I didn't leave corporate right. America. That is such a beautiful point because some people feel like they are stuck because they don't have clarity in their purpose and they're afraid to take you know, the very first step. And I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is you need to just take a step to know where you're moving, because, you know, even if you make the wrong step, you could always turn back around. At least at least you moved rather than, than yeah. you're not moving at all. Yeah. And, and the thing is, getting accustomed to risk and taking calculated risks and doing your due diligence in, in life, you know, not just in, you know, sort of in, in investing or in anything you you kind of you, you have to map out what a plan and a strategy would be and like you said have so have a safety net built you know we had a runway I, I call a runway you know we had a savings of like over a year so i knew that if i had failed i could always go back you know my skill set is in creative and i can go back and get a job easily mm. um to this day i can uh even more so because i've made so many connections with partners and had job offers and other companies are like hey stop building what you're doing and come work with us and i'm like I'm, i like what i'm doing even though i'll take it take the money thank you but it's it's a, it, it becomes greater than than me right it becomes mm. life's purpose and, and and doing something bigger this episode of the thrive state podcast is brought to you by the thrive state accelerator the Thrive State Accelerator is actually a home course that I developed using the exact same techniques I work with my celebrity clients, CEOs, and executives on how to get them to the Thrive State. The Thrive State Accelerator teaches you how to master your seven bioenergetic elements. That's sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, relationships, our thoughts and mindset, as well as purpose. In this Thrive State Accelerator, you're also going to get a bonus module on optimization. That's how I talk about supplementation, peptides, all the optimization techniques I use with my clients to get them to the Thrive State. Now, for some of you who are just joining us for the first time, you guys might be wondering, what is the Thrive State? Well, the Thrive State is actually the energy the epigenetic environment we give to ourselves, telling ourselves, telling our DNA how to act and how to respond. And if we want optimal health, longevity, and peak performance, if we can master these seven bioenergetic elements, our ability to have those three things that we just said, optimal health, longevity, and peak performance is at its greatest. And it also prevents you from getting chronic symptoms like brain fog, being overweight, feeling sluggish, acne, pain, all these chronic symptoms, as well as preventing you from getting chronic disease. So getting to that thrive state is really getting to that state to master being that very best version of yourself so you could show up for you, for your family, for your business, everything that's important to you. So go ahead, check it out right now at kianvu.com slash accelerator and use coupon code podcast25 for 25% off. Now back to the podcast. 
Oh, that, that's beautiful. And so, you know, I hope people can, you know, who, who feel a little bit stuck, just know that maybe the first action is, could be messy action, might not be the right action, but it will get you in the direction you're going. And it's over time that you play messy action, that you discover what you like, you discover what lights you up, and you discover the things that you don't. And then over time, you'll realize your purpose. So don't move because you don't have clarity in your purpose. It's in the action that the, that the purpose might, might come to you. Now, when you finally discover that or figure out what your gift is to the world and how you want to serve the world, I, I guess the next step is recognizing that building a strong personal brand is super important. Can, can you explain why that might be? You know, So somebody has a purpose and they know what they want to do for the world. Why is building a personal brand important in that process? Yeah, I, you know, I always say, and obviously I did not coin this phrase, but I love saying it. I don't know where it originated. You can maybe help me find, or your audience can help us find who originated this 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 term. But if you're starting a business, any type of business, whether it's it's your solopreneur or you already have a business, or you want to develop a personal brand, you know, uh, i.e., you know, like what what back in the day, Oprah. Tony Robbins, all these folks, right? They, it wasn't called a personal brand at the time, but everybody knew their name as a household. Right. Mm -hmm. So if anyone is going to do any business with you, Doc, or me, or with anyone else, they first have to know who the heck you are, right? How are they going to do business with you if they don't even know you exist, right? So, so you want to put enough content, you want to put enough out there so people know that, that you know, they're aware that you exist. So they want to know you. And then the second thing is they need to, once they know you, they want to, they need to like you. They need to understand like, okay, I like what Dr. V talks about. I like his mindset. I like his mission. I like his core values. I really like him. And maybe someday I will, you know, meet him and potentially trust and work with him, right? I want to work with him. People only work with people that they trust. Yeah. So know, like, and trust are the three things you need to establish in order for a relationship to, to form, AKA business. Right. So that's really, really where I find the strength in putting yourself out there as a personal brand and then tying that into your business. Because if you're doing if you're creating a business in this day and age, more than ever has to be tied to a human sort of being and a culture within of a team of people that you want to work with. Because if you find, say, let's let's use Gary V, for example, Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk, for anyone who doesn't know who he is, he's. He's, a, he's, he's the social sort of uh, sweetheart uh, of today, right? He knows, he knows everything about social media. Well, who's going to work in VaynerMedia that isn't aware of Gary Vaynerchuk? Like they're going to work with the company because they love Gary. So he's the one that leads by example for us to understand that if you're going to work with my company, say I honor your brands, mm -hmm. people love me as a brand and a personal brand first. And that is the first entry in the first, that's the cover of the book, right? Mm -hmm. And then for example, Thrive State, <laughs> you're literally on the cover of your book. You're exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about in terms of a successful personal brand. Cause then now people flip through it and they realize, oh, Dr. V has a really cool product or service that I'd like to be involved in. And that's where the magic happens. Mm, beautiful. So how would you, I mean, there is, you know, so many different aspects to getting yourself out there. There's social media, there's podcasts, there are blogs. It could seem like an endless amount of avenues that are out there. Where do people start? Just start, like you said, that there, there has to be something. It doesn't necessarily, there's no exact formula, but just start whatever is. So I, okay. So here's what I would recommend the audience. If you're an introvert, right? Or, or, or you label yourself as such, then maybe podcasting is not your best format or best platform. Mm -hmm. You can try blogging, right? If you're a great writer or you're someone that just is behind the scenes, put out your value to the world by showing them what you do through words, right? If that makes sense to translate into an audio experience, aka podcast, then you could try that as well, right? Without turning the camera on. Cause I know a lot of people are like, hey, I'm not camera ready or I got a face for radio, right? <laughs> now we should be saying I got a face for podcasting, but now there's so much video involved in podcasting. But that those are the two sort of avenues that you can take, right? Those are very simple. You can create a blog, you can put those on your LinkedIn profile, right? They have a very, 
user-friendly tool set that makes it look professional with headlines and sub high and like quotations and it just it's, it's great great platform so you don't need to use medium or some some other uh, tool set you can mm -hmm. simply use the ones that everybody uses and then eventually if you do want to evolve and you want to grow your brand and like your platforms then you can try podcasting through audio form or video form or both but those those are i'd say the the low hanging fruit that you can get out there. The, the challenge is, doctor, is that people have to understand and know that consistency is really the key mm. to success. You have to do it and create a system for yourself where you're doing it all the time. Mm. I, I think that is so important. So a few questions to ask here is, you mentioned, you know, what you do is you, you help people create podcasts and the content. You make, you tie it up in a bow and make it very easy for some of you. That, that's great. And so one might, you know, and, and, and I think a service like that would make anyone, you know, think of all the multitude of things that they need to do when they're creating a podcast makes it a lot easier. But the next question is that I get all the time are there are millions of podcasts that are out there. How does my podcast not get drowned in all the millions that are out there? Yeah, my new answer, because this is always a changing answer because right. the world is evolving. Um, I have two answers, but the one that I mainly use now is, that's like someone saying, why should I write a book? There's millions and millions, if not billions of books out there, mm -hmm. right? How is mine gonna stand out on the shelf? There's going to be someone that's interested in you. There's going to be someone that's interested in your story. And the thing is, it becomes less at that point during the creation process. It's less about them and it's more about you. What is the message that you need to tell? What is the story that you can share that's valuable to people because there are lessons that you've learned, failures that you've experienced, and you've learned lessons through those. Like the world needs to know. And the thing is, when we say the world, if we think about it, as billions of people, that's intimidating. But if you think about it as one, if you're able to serve one person, right, through a book, or here's the funny thing, if you create a podcast, the average podcast gets about 250 downloads per episode. Now, Dr. V, if I told you I have an opportunity for you, and it's not even far from home, you could just show up and speak to 250 individuals on stage. You are on stage and you get to share your story and tell them how you can help them. It's 250 souls. Isn't that an opportunity? It's an amazing opportunity. And that's what podcasting does. Podcast is people, if anyone who is a music lover as I am out there, understands that like when you go to a concert, you're crying because you're watching a band that you love and grew up with because they were in your headphones, in your Sony Walkman, for those of you who are my age, you know, you it, it's an intimate format where they're in your earbuds and talking to you and singing to you. Podcasts are very much like that when it comes to music and the connections mm. that can be made. Oh, that's beautiful. You mentioned two reasons. What was the other reason? Oh, the other one I always say is, uh, that's like someone saying, why would I create a YouTube channel? There's millions and millions of YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. No one really asks that. They just create it. So it's mm. the same thing. And the thing is, there aren't that many podcasts out there. I mean, I think there's technically 2 million, of which a very small percentage of those are active, meaning they release one episode a week. Mm. And I think that's less, th that's probably half a million or less. Mm, I see. Yeah. So let, let me ask you something. You, you mentioned consistency and just doing it over and over and over again. Yeah. I wonder, only because you work with so many you know, new podcasters, how long does it take for somebody to, to gain traction? I mean, how long should, should they say, I'm willing to do this thing before, you know, or, or should they just, just say, hey, I'm doing it out there as long as I can reach one person, I'm willing to do this over and over and over again. But yeah. what, what would you say the time frame is for, for somebody to know that, that what they're doing is really catching on? Yeah, so I always recommend anyone who starts a podcast, and I recommend anyone out there who, who thinks they have something to offer the world to start one, give it 12 months, give it six to 12 months. I say 12 months to start to notice that there's traction, like the rubber is starting to meet the road. So commit 12 months to a podcast and commit wholeheartedly. Don't don't just record and then go, oh yeah, I have a podcast. You never talk about it to anyone. You never share it on social, you know, things like that. Like 
people are only going to trust in what you're promoting or you're putting out there. Like if you're creating something and you, no one knows about it, it's not, you, you can't expect anyone to know that, that or, or listen to it. So I would say commit 12 months and be consistent. Like I said, at least an episode a week, mm -hmm. four episodes a month. So that gives you 50 to 52, you know, you could take a break in there, but about 50 episodes, commit to 50 episodes and then see what happens. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. So many things will happen that you're completely unaware of. So cool. Now let's talk about that because yeah. people are always, okay, well, I'm going to do this podcast and it's something I'm interested in. What are some of these op opportunities that open up once, yeah. once you start getting out into the world? Let, let's uh, here, give them that carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give them this. So, okay. You start a podcast, right? So I'm going to say, Hey, Dr. V, you want a podcast? You don't have a podcast yet? And so let's go back in time. And you're like, yeah, what's it going to do for me? And then I literally pick up, have you ever seen the matrix? Do you remember? Matrix Reloaded, and there was the key maker, the key oh, master. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And remember, it was a little Asian dude that like had literally a big ring, and it was all these keys, sort of like a landlord, right? And then like he was the key master. And I just hand you this. I'm like, here's what you got, bro. I'm giving you this. And you're like, what is this for? Don't worry. You're, you're going to see and you're going to understand soon. All of a sudden, you start the podcast and you realize, wait a minute, this key opens a door to this opportunity. And this key opened the door to this opportunity and this person and this, the thing is, I'm going to share a story with you. I had probably less than a dozen episodes at the time. And mm -hmm. I went to an entrepreneur magazine event. Mm -hmm. One of their very few, if not, I don't know when they're throwing one again, but it was amazing. It was probably in 2017 or 18. The editor in chief was the MC. He's running around and it was Jason Pfeiffer. And uh, I said, man, he's, he's so cool. He's got a lot of energy. I'd love to chat with him. I had started a podcast, right? And I was like, hmm, I wonder if he would be a guest on it. So the whole day went by. I never had an opportunity until at the very end, he's leaving. He's got a book. He's got, he's, he's one, he's one strapping it. He's got his book mm -hmm. bag. And I see him across the room. He's leaving. And I literally yell out, Doc, I go, I go, yo, Fife, like that. And he turns around. He's like, who the hell is calling me? Yo, Fife. And then, uh, I start walking up to him and he's walking up towards me and he's, he's kind of like squinting his eyes. Like, do I know this guy? <laughs> and I put out my hand. I said, Hey man, great job on stage all day. Amazing. You know, I love, I love your work. Uh, I love, I love all the, the content that you put out for entrepreneur. He's like, thanks. Thanks, man. And I'm like, I'd love to have a conversation with you on my podcast. It's called entrepreneur circle. And his eyes lit up and I'm thinking like, uh Oh, not in a good way to me. I was like paranoid that he was going to steal entrepreneur circle. So I went home and I trademarked it. I was like, wait, let me get some lawyers involved. Let me trademark this before entrepreneur magazine takes it. So I got him on the show several weeks later. What opportunity would I, and, and I can't even begin to tell you everything that happened after that, all the things and all the people and all the opportunities that I had after meeting him. But if I didn't have a platform of which that a stage that he could stand on and talk to my audience, which was probably my mom and my wife at the time, but he didn't mm -hmm. know. Right. He, he did see that I had Randy Zuckerberg on the show. So I think that was the reason why he said yes later. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the thing is, he and I would never have had a conversation and a relationship. He's been on my show multiple times, showed up to my events, spoke at my events. Mm. How would that relationship even have happened? If I said, hey, uh, um, can I have a can, can I have five minutes with you? Maybe maybe I'll buy a cup of coffee. Get the hell out of here, kid. I don't need to talk to you. But the fact that I had a podcast. He said, yes. I mean, mm. and I could tell you a dozen or more stories about opportunities and experiences that I've had because of the podcast that allowed me to have a conversation with someone that I normally wouldn't have a conversation with. Oh, beautiful. And as a carrot for anybody who's thinking about it, as a carrot for, for people who are listening to this right now and not sure if they are ready to get their message out there and form it, I at least, I don't want to speak for you, Eric, but I will be a guest on your podcast. You could have the doctor say you listen to this podcast with me and Eric, and I will become your guest if you start a podcast. I will say yes to you. Wow. Yeah. So there you Amazing. go. There's that, there's that carrot for you. Dude, right? that's huge. You can have Dr. V on your show. First guest. <laughs> That's amazing. This is another question I, I'd like to ask. And I heard you talk about this on another podcast you were on, but you really kind of consider yourself a family man first. 
And, you know, my family got put together very quickly. You know, I, I met my partner two years ago. She had a seven, you know, a six-year-old daughter at the time. And then she moved in with me like shortly after COVID hit, we got pregnant and then we, wow. you know, we got my daughter. So, I mean, I, I created this family and, and now I'm starting to like kind of balance, you know, my life in media with this new family, all, all this. I'd like to say I'm a family first guy. I'm having a little bit of difficulty, you know, putting the right amount of attention in everything that I want to grow. How do you handle that? Yeah, I have to say not, not perfect or not well. I mean, it's always learning and always growing and always evolving. Yeah. Um, but the fact that I have awareness for it versus who I was in corporate America, burning the candle at both ends, that, that was not sustainable. That I could not either I was going to lose it or I was going to be a terrible husband and a terrible father, you know, flying off the handle in front of a, a toddler. You know, that's the way I grew up, you know, in, in a very tumultuous sort of environment where you had to walk on eggshells. You know, my father's like the macho of macho men, you know, like, Hey, failure is not an option. Kid, don't cry. Suck it up. You know, sounds um, like Mr. Very, T. Yeah. 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 He was Mr. <laughs> T actually. He was, <laughs> I called him dad though, but uh, yeah. He's very tough. And, uh, you know, and I credit, I credit him for a lot of my sort of confidence, you know, mm. and, and being able to just walk up to people and, and yell, yo, Fife. But the thing is, I had to understand that as I build business, you know, people always talk about work life balance, but they don't ever execute on like, what are the tactics? What are the daily rituals and habits that you have to create in order to strike balance? Right. And, and it's never truly 50, 50, it's always gonna be 49, 51, or sometimes some yeah. days 70, 30, but in the long run, the compound effect is 50, 50. So family man with a business and not businessman with a family is a mantra that I adopted through, through one of my masterminds and front row dads with you know, big shout out to John Roman and what he created. And, and that is truly how I've sort of changed and shifted my whole mindset and how I actively change my calendar to incorporate family activity. So for example, here's the one huge thing that's changed my life and I'm hoping it can help someone in your, your audience and tribe is that, I don't know if anyone or if you've ever read of the family board uh, meeting. The, oh, the family board no. meeting is from a book, uh, a guy named Jim Shields. And he, it's, very, it's a very quick read. You, know, you can read in half an hour. <laughs> but the, I'll, I'll give it to you here in a sentence or two is that, if you can put into your calendar a meet a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your kids. So if you have multiple kids like you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, daddy daughter for us, right? I don't have a son, but daddy daughter day with Veronica, it's on my calendar once every three months. And what I do is I block out four hours with her and she gets to do whatever she wants. No phones, no digital distractions, televisions, movies, or anything. It's just one-on-one. -on -one, what do you want to do for that day? And like clockwork, no matter what is going on, I drop everything. And we spend morning to afternoon together. Now, the cool side effect is that the other uh, child gets to spend one-on-one -on -one with mommy, right? And then they go bake and they go do things and they go to the park and do things. And it's gotten to the point now, now, so then the, the, the next child, same thing. So you, if you do, it's a, it's a formula. If you read the book, you can't do more or less of it, or it won't work. Mm. But what you're doing is you're creating memories. What you're doing is embedding and making indelible sort of marks on their life. So that when they look back, when they, and they move out of the house, they will ask you, can we still do that? Daddy? I, I know I'm 23 years old but I still look forward to daddy daughter days. I want to, I want to get together. And the family board meeting is not family board, like a conference room, but it's mm -hmm. uh, surfboards. That's what the reference is. Oh, wow. Neat, neat, neat. Yeah. Beautiful board meeting. Well, Hey, thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom today. I know the people who are listening really feel like they, they need a shift in their life and hopefully the shift, you know, puts you into a place where you start to rediscover your purpose. And, you know, once you go kind of go in that direction, you know, what building a personal brand is so important for you. And when people are ready, I want people to go out, go out and find you. In fact, learn about you now. So how, where do people find you? Yeah, they can find us or find me personally at Eric, E-R-I-K, Cabral.co. That's, that's my website and really 
pretty much shows everything that I'm doing. So that's one stop shop. If you want to learn more, you want to reach out to me. Sounds great. So that's Eric with a K, Cabral, C-A-B-R-A-L dot C-O. Last question for you. You've lived quite an extraordinary life. You've got a beautiful family, lots of purpose, building this on-air brands and, and lots of other projects I know you're involved with. What has been your best medicine? Best medicine is, is taking the leap of faith, right? And, and knowing that we can do way more than what we're doing and trust in yourself and trust around, trust the people around you to, to love and support what, you know, what you're doing. And, um, and, and know that, uh, you know, if, if all else fails, if you have your health, mm. right. And you have your, your rituals and you take care of yourself, you, you know, I love the saying, and I'm sure you do is, is we have to wear the oxygen mask before we can help oh, the absolutely. person next to us. Yeah. So let's take care of ourselves, especially in this day and age, because that is critical for us mm. to help others. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's end with that. Eric Cabral, thank you for being on the Five State Podcast, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Thrive State Podcast. And if this podcast is bringing a lot of value to you, if you find that your life is just improving with this podcast, that your life is getting to the next level, please consider supporting it. And here's a few ways you can do so. You can do so by liking this video and commenting on this video and also sharing this video with your friends and family. Another thing you can do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash ThriveState. Go ahead and leave us a five-star review there. It will really, really help this show grow. And it, this will give me more time so that I could actually give more content to you just like you got in this episode. And if you haven't already picked up a copy of my book, Thrive State, your blueprint for optimal health, longevity, and peak performance. You can pick it up now. It became a number one new release in longevity. Go to thrivestatebook.com. And if you enjoy the book, please consider leaving us a review as well. And the last thing you can do if you're liking everything here and you want to work uh, more closely with me as well as my team to get you into the Thrive State, Go to kianvu.com slash accelerator and consider joining the home course, the Thrive State Accelerator. It's really the course that I use. It's the concepts that I use personally when I work with CEOs, celebrities, and my high profile clients to get them to the Thrive State. Again, the Thrive State Accelerator at kianvu.com slash accelerator. And because you're a listener of this podcast, I want you to save 25% by using the coupon code podcast25. I hope we continue to give value to you. And remember always, you are your best medicine. <laughs>